Tuesday of the 34th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked, and there was a white cloud, and sitting on the cloud, one who looked like a son of man, with a gold crown on his head, and a sharp sickle in his hand. Another angel came out of the temple, crying out in a loud voice to the one sitting on the cloud, Use your sickle and reap the harvest, for the time to reap has come, because the earth's harvest is fully ripe. So the one who was sitting on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. Then another angel came out of the temple in heaven, who also had a sharp sickle. Then another angel came from the altar, who was in charge of the fire, and cried out in a loud voice to the one who had the sharp sickle, Use your sharp sickle and cut the clusters from the earth's vines, for its grapes are ripe. So the angel swung his sickle over the earth and cut the earth's vintage. He threw it into the great wine press of God's fury. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, The Lord comes to judge the earth. Say among the nations, The Lord is King. He has made the world firm not to be moved. He governs the peoples with equity. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Then shall all the trees of the forest exult. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. The Lord comes to judge the earth. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflection How would you respond if someone prophesied that your church or place of worship would be destroyed? In 1972, a violent earthquake ripped through the center of Managua and destroyed the great cathedral church. This was only the beginning of the troubles for the tiny nation and Christian community of Nicaragua which suffered great turmoil and loss in the civil war that ensued for more than a decade. Out of the ashes of destruction and the ravages of communism has emerged a humbler and more purified church. God sends many signs today pointing not only to his coming judgment but also to his saving action and mercy. Jesus foretold many signs of God's action and judgment. To the great consternation of the Jews, Jesus prophesied the destruction of their temple at Jerusalem. The Jewish people took great pride in their temple, a marvel of the ancient world. The foretelling of this destruction was a dire judgment in itself. They sought Jesus for a sign that would indicate when this would occur. Jesus admonished them to not seek signs but rather to seek God's kingdom. There will be plenty of signs pointing to God's ultimate judgment wars, 
famines, diseases, earthquakes, etc. An American judge, named Robert H. Bork, recently wrote a book entitled, Slouching Towards Gomorrah. His message sounds an alarm about the moral crisis and decay of culture which he sees at the end of a millennium. We often don't recognize the moral crisis and spiritual conflict of our age until something shakes us up to the reality of our present condition. The reward for the righteous and the penalty for the unrighteous are not always experienced in this life, but they are sure to come in the day of judgment. There will be persecution, suffering, and difficulties in this age until the Lord comes again. God intends our anticipation of his final judgment to be a powerful deterrent to wrongdoing. God extends grace and mercy to all who will heed his call and his warning. Do you take advantage of this season of grace and mercy to seek God's kingdom and to pursue his will? Lord, your grace and mercy abounds even in the midst of turmoil and destruction. Increase my hunger for your kingdom and help me to be faithful to your word. May nothing, not even the fear of death or the loss of all that I have, deter me from seeking you and the coming of your kingdom with hope and joy.